It's finally happening. It's time for the Disney World Charcuterie Board Throwdown. You asked for it, so today we're doing the Charcuterie Board Throwdown. We are headed around Walt Disney World to a couple of the parks, resorts, and here at Disney Springs on a quest to find the best of meats and cheeses. We're going to be looking at very expensive charcuterie boards, not so expensive charcuterie boards, unusual offerings. I'm so excited. This is a millennial dream. It is. Let's go. Let's let's go. I need cheese. So excited. We put in the work, we put in the hours, we scoured all of the menus that we could find here in Walt Disney World and narrowed it down to seven distinct charcuterie boards. The first three of which are here at Disney Springs, including the most expensive board we are going to find on our journey. Our first stop on the list may not be surprising, Wine Bar George. This is a Mam Fam favorite restaurant, and you're probably like, could you stop reviewing this food? You go there all the time. I'm sorry, I can't help it, especially when we're talking about meats and cheeses, we would be doing a disservice to the list if we did not consider Wine Bar George. Wine Bar George is brought to you by Master Sommelier George Milotones. He used to do the wine list over at California Grill, and then he opened up Wine Bar George a few years ago. You are going to find some incredible small plates like that cheese on fire, the meatballs, the fried mac and cheese bites, and obviously you've got an amazing wine list here. And what goes great with wine? Charcuterie. So we've got a few to choose from, including, as Alan said, the most expensive board on our list. You know. I, I figured we would have some cocktails, mix it up at a few of these locations. And I'm hardly one to turn down a good glass of wine, especially with a charcuterie board at a wine bar. Especially when we got the recommendation from George himself. Not a recommendation, Multiple. the recommendation. So what's amazing about this restaurant is that, again, George, owner, he's here all the time. He gave us our waters, bust our table and said, can I interest you in a wine list? Yes, George. Yes. yes. I wasn't planning on it, but now that you've mentioned yes. it, absolutely. Yes, I was just going to ask for a glass of something that would go well with the board, but George came over and he circled a few things, so now we have a bottle on the way. I have no regrets. No. The service is always incredible. Whether you have George himself come to your table or any of the servers, I've never had anything but superior service at this restaurant, which is one of the reasons I like it so much. Also, all the servers are constantly educating themselves and learning more about wine, taking classes with George himself. So if you ever need a recommendation, you're not sure what's going to go well with what you're ordering, or maybe you're not a, a big wine drinker and you don't know what to go for, or maybe you are more of an experienced wine drinker and you just want a good recommendation, that's happened every time I've come in here. So George circled these three for us and said that these were things he was drinking and things he enjoyed. And then we actually let our server, Chris, pick which one we ended up getting to go with the meal. But truly, this wine list is incredible and uh, one of my favorite things in Disney Springs. Truly, sure, cheddar out of Seattle. Uh, blue cheese from Point Reyes, California. Spanish Manchego sheep's milk out of La Mancha. Home is unpasteurized cow's milk from Georgia and uh, triple cream brie from the south of France. Humboldt Fog, Northern Californian creamy goat cheese. Uh, with the meats, some pork pate, prosciutto, house-made spa Spanish chorizo, excuse me, spicy calabrese salami, and Italian mortadella bologna to go with everything. Some whole grain mustard, fig jam, marcona Spanish almonds, cornichon pickles, red red pepper bacon relish, local honeycomb, and spiced olives. Amazing. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that was delightful. It was. There was so much going on. It was the big board. It was the big board. I have, like, no words right now because I'm digesting. First things first, kudos, obviously, to the wine recommendation from George and our server, Chris. It was amazing. I don't pretend to be a wine connoisseur, but I know a little bit about wine, and it was, like, jammy and fruity, and it was adjacent to a Pinot Noir, but it was something a little different. So, again, ask your server what you should drink, and I, and I know they'll find you something good. Let's talk about that board. It Ooh. was incredible. Now, the big board is, as the name would suggest, the largest board that they actually have on the menu. And it is the most expensive charcuterie board that is on the charcuterie board challenge. But that is not to say that if you come to Wine Bar George, you are locked into only having to get that board. That's right. They do have a cheese board and a meat board specifically listed on the menu for a much lower price point. And we talked to our server and he said, if you ask, they can make that a meat and cheese board. They can swap some things out. They want to work with you, want to make sure you have a good time. We just opted to go for the big board so we could try everything. You know, for science. Science. Food science. Cheese science. Meat science. Sorry, my brain's stuck on meat science. <laughs> Anyway, 
My favorite parts of the board included that red pepper and bacon jam. I thought that was an excellent condiment addition to the board. I also really liked the manchego cheese and the house made spicy chorizo. It was smoky, it was spicy, it was a really, really good meat. Nothing on the board was bad, but those were the highlights for me. For me, it was the pork pate that was incredible and also the fig jam. The fig jam was so good. Uh, I will say that this board, I mean, we're starting off strong, has so much in way of accoutrement. Yes, the almonds were great too. Oh yeah. 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 But it's going to be interesting to see how the others contend when we just, again, this is the big board. It has the most that you're going to find on any charcuterie board, so obviously it should have a lot of accoutrement. Starting big. Uh, we will be rating each of these charcuterie boards on a 1 to 10 snicky snack scale. Snicky snack? I'm going to start strong and give this one an 8.6. An 8.6. Yeah, I want room to grow because while this was amazing, it is really expensive, uh, which I think is, you know, it is high quality ingredients, but it is at a higher price point, less approachable that way. And I think while it was amazing and there were some unique elements on it, it's not the most unique board we're gonna see and I'm looking for something to dazzle me. It is a solid board. Yeah. There aren't any, uh, what I think you're saying is there's no gimmicks. There's no surprises. There's no gimmicks on the board. It is just a good and solid board. For me, it's gonna be an 8.3. Solid board. Again, yep. I think the, what's off-putting is, one, the size. That's a full meal. Oh, yeah. The, the, I'm very full. You're We're going to have to take a lap before we go get the next one. You're not going to be disappointed by anything on that board. I think there are going to be some things that might be a little bit unique for certain people to try, like the pate, for example. I know that might cause some, some pause. But if you're a foodie, this is a board for you. Just be aware of the cost. Starting strong, though. What's up next? Jack Lindsay's. Heck, yeah. Up next and literally right across the street from Wine Bar George is where we're stopping next and that is Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, which is one of my personal favorite lounges, bars, watering holes in all of Disney Springs and it is themed after Indiana Jones, specifically Indiana Jones pilot Jock Lindsay, uh, hence the name the Hangar Bar, place where he would go and store their planes. But inside you can find a whole bunch of memorabilia from the Indiana Jones movies, a lot of different secrets and Easter eggs, and also probably one of the most unique charcuterie boards that you will find on this trek, travel, journey, experience, extravaganza, other synonyms. I enjoy Jack Lindsay's for a variety of reasons, mainly because not only are their beverages great, but they have an incredible menu of elevated bar bites that includes flatbreads and wings and what we're here for, which is this incredible charcuterie board served inside of a House-made pretzel, which I'm excited about. As you'll notice, the accoutrement are a cheese fondue, mustard, you have sausage and some cured, what looks like salami, cheddar and gouda cheese, house-made pickles, which I'm here for, as well as some prosciutto. Perfect spin, well executed. I will give it a, uh, a 7 out of 10. Well done. Stuck the landing. Nailed it. I'm very excited about this board in particular, mainly because I love me a large soft pretzel and combine that with a charcuterie board, I'm a happy camper. Why aren't you eating? There's birds up there. And I don't trust them. And I don't like that they're in here because I didn't sit outside on the patio knowing you were getting this pretzel and knowing that the birds are very brave here. They'll come sit like on your table and I thought we'd be safe inside. And I feel like they're sending me a message that nowhere is safe. That one's a winner. It's going to be hard to beat. The fact it's served in a pretzel. Jock Lindsay must know that I love both a large pretzel and a charcuterie board and the fact that they shoved them together to make a beautiful appetizer baby. I couldn't love it more. It is very good and also incredibly unique. I think that the Jock Lindsay charcuterie board is approachable. It has a unique twist yeah. on what you're going to get in a charcuterie board. You're not going to find anything there that's going to be off-putting. Everything on that board is going to be delicious. Um, I, for one, love the pickles. The pickles sell it for oh, yeah. me every single time. 
The pickles are definitely a highlight on this board. I think they add a needed crunch that you don't get from really anything else because you're given a pretzel as opposed to a crostini or a cracker. That said, the fact that it is a pretzel with beer cheese and mustard makes this one more unique and makes it something fun and a little bit more unusual for me. If I was gonna add one thing to this board, it would be some kind of soft cheese. I don't know how well that would work with the pretzel and I know there's the beer cheese dipping, but usually my favorite cheese on a board is some kind of like, goat or creamy brie or or something along those lines and so i would like that element but honestly i love the smoked gouda i love the pretzel i love the pickles it's it's a really good board and i honestly think it's gonna be tough to beat what would you rate the jock Lindsay board on the sneaky snack scale nine six nine six i'm sorry i think i i don't know what more you want from me other than to enjoy a giant pretzel with beer cheese and charcuterie it's nine, my dream six it's my dream okay i'm gonna go with an 8.9 it's still very very good mm-hmm. i know that you mentioned that the pickle adds a crunch what i want from this board is them to give me another cracker varietal so then you have pretzel this. and cracker yes. give me whoa. all the carbs whoa all the carbs if well. you give me some sort of lightly toasted, maybe pretzel bread that's been cut into a crostini, it's interesting. that's pushing it over the edge. I do think it's top tier, probably going to be one of the better boards that we have on this challenge. Well, let's go see what's next. <sighs> we have asked. Surprise! It's nighttime. Time of day change. It seems that eating three charcuterie boards in three hours at Disney Springs is a tad bit ambitious. So we have come back a different day and a different time as the night sky would uh, suggest for our final charcuterie board here in Disney Springs. Could we have ordered all three in one day? Sure. But would we have enjoyed them as much? I don't know that we would have. And that's not fair to the charcuterie boards. And that's what we're here for. To be fair to meats and cheeses. Exactly. We have integrity. It may come as no surprise to you that our final spot on the list is Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. And like Weimar George, yes, we've been here before. Yes, we've been here recently, but their food is so phenomenal. It would be doing everyone a disservice if we did not include their charcuterie board, especially because it's probably the most unusual charcuterie board you're going to see today. Homecoming is owned and brought to you by Chef Art Smith, who's a James Beard Award winner. He was Oprah's personal chef for over a decade, and his menu is Southern excellence. I'm talking comfort food, the best fried chicken you're ever going to have, and I'm excited to get in there. Homecoming is incredibly popular. It's one of the most popular restaurants in all of Disney World, so it can be hard to snag a reservation. However, once again, one of our pro tips for eating, especially in Disney Springs, is that many restaurants offer bar seating, where you can come up to the bar and you can order off the full menu. Now, of course, this is much easier if you're a party of one or two versus a big party. However, I've had good luck doing this in the past. I don't know what I was expecting with the Jasper board. Uh, But this has blown anything that I thought out of the water. It is described as an array of southern charcuterie. And you have what looks to be your uh, toasted crackers and breads on the side here. Pimento cheese, grapes, crackers, smoked sausage, shaved country ham, shaved honey ham, the house-made pickles, tomato, bacon, jam, and chicken salad. And I immediately thought, hey, there's not a lot of cheese here, but I love pimento cheese and also... On the side, we have ordered two biscuits and an extra ramekin of pimento cheese for a dollar each. The best $3-ish I've ever spent. I think if there's any hack that we walk away with on this, it's getting the extra biscuits and pimento cheese. Also got to point out, we also got one of my favorite foods in all of Walt Disney World. These are Chef Art Smith's thigh-high chicken biscuits. They're on the appetizer menu, but it's his signature buttermilk fried chicken House-made hot honey, those house-made pickles all atop his signature cheddar drop biscuits. I am so happy right now. (sighs) There's just something about homecoming. It's so good, and I'm sorry we featured it every food video, but I'm not because every food video makes sense. It's like best brunch in Disney World, homecoming. Cheesy video, homecoming. Charcuterie, homecoming. It's just like, I'm not sorry at all. It's like I'm going back home to my roots. It's so nice. It's amazing. Now, this charcuterie board I thought was interesting. It was one of the more unique boards that we had. It was certainly nothing like the Italian-inspired kind of classic charcuterie board, but I think that's why I liked it. It's definitely a departure from the norm. I think the best part about this board was the thinly shaved meats, the country ham and the honey ham that we had, which you were able to sort of pile on top of the crackers or bread, um, along with the pimento cheese and that incredible tomato bacon spread. That that 
tomato bacon spread, I would like a jar of it, a vat of it, nay, a bucket, and I want to put it on everything. It was my favorite condiment of any condiment we had in this entire adventure. The thing that did throw me off a little bit was that it was just pimento cheese. Now, granted, as somebody who grew up in the South, I love pimento cheese. I'm never going to say no to it. But again, life hack, order another ramekin for a dollar more because that's you're going to need it. Also, do yourself a favor and order yourself a biscuit or two to go on the side. I really think that amps the board as well. For me, the lack of cheese is where I'm having issue with the board. When I eat a charcuterie board, even though I know charcuterie is just technically the meat part, I want multiple cheeses too. So I think on the Snicky Snack scale, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it an 8-3. It was delicious. It was amazing. I'd absolutely eat it again, but I needed more cheese. My stars. I know. I'm going to be giving this one an 8-7. It's so good, and I know that it appeals to my roots, but I don't know. There's something about the hearty nature of this, the stick-to-your-ribs board. I love it. And side note, those chicken biscuits are absolutely incredible. I, like, a tear comes to my eye every time I eat one. So get and that's those not too. sarcasm. It does. It's like hot honey, sweet pickles, perfectly fried chicken, the biscuit. It's a perfect food. We have made it to our next destination, Disney's Hollywood Studios where we have two charcuterie boards to sample, one at the Hollywood Brown Derby and the other at Baseline. All right, let's get into it, I'm pumped. First up, the Hollywood Brown Derby, specifically the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge. This is one of my personal favorite places in Disney World to grab a cocktail. It's a full service bar, plus they've got some light bites, obviously they've got charcuterie, why else would we be here? You can also order off the full Brown Derby menu if you'd like, A plus people watching, and a great place to take a break in a very busy park. Unlike the restaurant itself, you cannot make a reservation here. However, you can use their walk-up wait list. If it's busy, uh, you can do that with the My Disney Experience app. When we checked, it was only 10 minutes today. I signed up, and within a few moments, I had a message ready to be seated. Obviously, we're here for the charcuterie, but also on the lounge menu, they've got the famous Cobb salad. That is what the Brown Derby is known for. They have a tuna niswa salad, a shrimp cocktail, and BLT sliders. Those sound delicious. And then again, you can order anything you want off the full Brown Derby menu as well. They have a variety of non-alcoholic cocktails, many of which are served with a souvenir glow cube, it looks like. They're known for a few things. If you're looking for a dessert beverage, the grapefruit cake martini is delightful. It is a nod to grapefruit cake, which was invented at the original Brown Derby. And then, of course, they've got great classic old cocktails because you're at an old Hollywood-themed bar. Think really good martinis, Manhattans, Old Fashions, Tom Collins, etc. 99% sure it's impossible to come and sit at the Brown Derby Lounge and not have a fabulous cocktail, so we had to, legally required. I decided to mix it up today and go for the Martini Flight. So they do two different flight beverages here. They have a margarita flight and a martini flight where you get samples of three of their signature recipes. So I've got a vodka martini with an olive, a gin martini with a twist, and then their signature pomegranate martini. Thank you, Vanna. Time to dabble in the flight. First up, vodka and olive. My tray tables are full upright and locked position. Cell phones on airplane mode. You know, it's a well-made martini. They always are. They have very good bartenders here. It's a very classic, stiff drink. Um, I don't prefer olive, but it's not overwhelmingly olivey or dirty. Um, it's not very dry either, and I do prefer mine a little bit drier. Now, shockingly, even though I'm more of a vodka drinker than a gin drinker, I do like the gin martini a little bit better because I like the twist. Um, so the lemon twist adds it a little bit of zest. It adds a little bit of... Um, tartness to kind of break up that really intense liquor tasting. They're also using nice gin, which I feel like a lot of people don't know what good gin tastes like, and they just think of a bad gin and tonic at like a, a wedding reception or a family reunion. Um, but that's really nice gin that added a little bit of, of herbaceousness to that citrus twist. And then the pomegranate. The pomegranate one's my favorite one. Um, it's just a little bit more unique than the other two, and I love that. It's not super sweet at all. Otherwise, obviously, I wouldn't like it, but it is definitely less alcohol tasting than the other two, though, granted, it still definitely tastes like alcohol. Um, I love doing the little flights because I feel like it's fun to try different things and mix it up, and if you've never had a martini before, you don't know what kind of martini you'd like, it's fun to kind of do the mix and match situation. The Manhattan is just stunning. It is spicy rye whiskey offset by a little bit of sweet vermouth. Again, for folks who say that they're not whiskey drinkers, I always encourage them to try a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned because I think they're great introductory drinks to whiskey. And this is no exception. It's not going to knock your socks off. It's not going to taste like 
the harsh alcohol flavor. It's just a great classic cocktail. And I'm so fancy. And here's the Brown Derby charcuterie board. This is just always a really solid board in my opinion. I first of all love that it's branded to the Brown Derby. And I find that this one has a fair portion and a good mix of kind of the usual and unusual. You've got your cured meats here, your stone ground mustard, your blue. I love the Spanish torta crackers that they add here. They've got a duck roulette here that's amazing. Um, some lavender and Earl Grey rubbed uh, cheese as well as a drunken goat cheese and then house made gherkins and olives yeah <sighs> a well, classic board yeah a classic board I have had that charcuterie board many many times and it's solid every time a highlight for me has to be the amazing cured and smoked ham it was so good deep smoky flavor just delicious I also think the cheese selection is really nice. That blue was my favorite. It was not super funky blue. And I also love Drunken Goat. And the Earl Grey cheese was a little bit something different. How'd you feel about the duck? The that duck, was the most unusual thing on the board. The duck was the most unusual thing on the board. Listen, very flavorful. It is a chilled meat that's in kind of not a paste, but it's sort of a... a, a it's like a chicken like salad. Like a, like like a, a duck a salad, salad situation. So you have to be okay with that texturally. But the flavor was not gamey, it was not oppressive, just very, very tasty and actually pretty light. The one place this board loses me a little bit is I don't think the accoutrement are super strong. You've got your little pickles, your olives, your mustard, but I love like a, a nut on there or like a fig jam. Ooh, a jam would have been a yeah, game Yeah, a jam would have been really good. Um, all right. Rankings. One, one to 10 on the Snicky Snack scale. This is a 6.5 on the Snicky Snack wow. scale for me. It is above average, but it certainly isn't gonna be the best board you get, but you will never be disappointed. I'm going to give them a 7.5 for mostly the same reasons. Consistently delicious bonus points for it being at Brown Derby Lounge, which is one of my favorite places to people watch, get a good cocktail, a solid classic. And now to probably the cheapest board we're going to eat. Up next is Baseline Tap House, which has a nice selection of craft beers. And for those of you who don't indul indulge in adult beverages, also some craft sodas. They also have what I tend to refer to as an elevated bar bite menu with things like a giant pretzel, beer cheese, mustard, as well as one of the, uh, in my opinion, least expensive and best bang for your buck charcuterie boards you can grab. And it has arrived, the second of the charcuterie boards of the day here in Hollywood Studios. We have a goat cheese crusted in pumpkin seeds and cranberry, gherkin style pickles, crostinis, I hope they are garlic crostinis, cured meats, blue cheese, and tomo, which is akin to a cheddar cheese, stone ground mustard, and some grapes. And the most impressive thing about this board is that it's about half the cost of all the other boards we've had. This baby, even with recent price increases, is only $12.50, which that's not bad when you're considering Disney prices and how much food it is. <sighs> a solid. It's been on my must list for a long time. Just such a good board. The, Love it. The cost of that board makes it very, very appealing. So it definitely, in my mind, when I'm thinking about the different boards, that definitely is a factor. Highlight of the board for me has to be the stone ground mustard. It was so good. It was, good. It was better than the brown derby's mustard. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm sorry. No, I, you're not. I'm not. I do think the cheeses here are quite good. They're not the most unusual or adventurous cheeses that you're going to get. The blue is a, a rather funky blue, at least compared to the one we just had at the Brown Derby. But it's a really standard mild goat cheese. I do like that little herby rub. And then the Toma um, is basically just cheddar. All very good and solid, but nothing really unusual. The salami, the cured meats they provide, are it's pretty good. It's a solid cured meat. I love that it provides me grapes for health. Mm. Gotta have that. And the pickles, which are, seem to be a staple of Hollywood Studios, also very solid. Overall, a very solid, nothing too outlandish and fancy. I do like those crostinis, though. Ooh uh, nothing too adventurous, but very solid and a really good price point. So how many Snicky Snacks do you give the Baseline Tap House charcuterie board? I'm gonna give it seven, seven. Seven, seven. And honestly, that bump up is because of the cost. I think how much you get for the low price point makes it a really good deal in a very expensive charcuterie world. I don't think it's going to blow you away as far as adventurous charcuterie-ing, which I just made into a verb. Charcutering? Char nope. Char uh -uh. Nope. Uh-uh. Nope. Whatever you said was better. And we're back. Okay, what were we saying? But I do think it's a solid board and it's at Baseline, which is one of my favorite places to grab a drink. 
For me, this is a seven, solid seven, and uh, for the same reasons Molly listed. What I would say is that if you are somebody who's not into adventurous eating and you want to have a little bit of a of a solid charcuterie without having to work through funky cheeses, this is the place to do it. You also aren't doing too many things with adventurous meats either. Just a really good choice for if you want a you want a charcuterie board. On to the next. We away. Up next on our charcuterie sampling adventure is Epcot, and we are headed to. Probably one of the uh, most fun places, one of my favorite spots in all of Epcot, and that is, uh, well, you'll see. Malo talked to you about it. There are quite a few glorious places to get a cheese board in Epcot, and maybe the country we've chosen is surprising. But as far as unusual accoutrement you're going to see on a board, mm. I don't know if it gets more unusual than what's here in Canada. Putting a pin in that, though, other places you could get a very good cheese board, charcuterie board here in Epcot. They've, of course, got that great cheese board in the France Bakery, which I love. That's a quick service option. No meat on that one. They've also got great cheese and charcuterie plates in Italy at Tutto Italia, which is the full service restaurant there. I wish that Tutto Gusto, which was the wine cellar there, still did light bites. They now just do drinks. Um, otherwise, that, that would have probably made the list as a good walk-up option. Which leads us here to Canada, home of the Roses, one of my favorite families, dear friends of mine. Maybe you know them, Johnny, Moira, Alexis, and David. Uh, and we are headed into Le Cellier, which is the signature restaurant here, known for their steak, but holders of a delightful charcuterie board. Le Cellier is a signature steakhouse, and signature in this case is a Disney word for more expensive. They are known for that signature filet that's got the incredible mushroom sauce, their cheddar cheese soup, other incredible cuts of meat. Some people say this restaurant's a little overrated, but in my experience, it's been consistently one of the best meals, both in terms of service, both in terms of quality of steak, quality of soup, quality of just overall experience. It's nice and cozy in here because, of course, uh, you're supposed to be inside of a cellar in a, in a chateau. And I just really like this restaurant, and I'm excited to enjoy their delicious cheese board. Tudo de Parma with some pickled vegetables. This is a bison and dried cherry sausage. We also have our short rib pastrami with a maple whiskey whole grain mustard. Then we have Point Reyes blue cheese with honeycomb. The middle one is a drunken goat cheese with a berry gastrique. And this is a double cream brie with a popcorn brittle. Now the last item is our beef tallow candle. This is beef fat that's been seasoned with garlic and rosemary. Once that softens and melts a little bit, you can spread it on the bread like butter. The candle is edible. All right, that is a very good and very filling board. Do you ever go in to get a charcuterie board and then order a steak? Yes, just now. Whoops. We did do that. It was amazing, by the way. The steak was excellent. De not to derail the charcuterie video, but <laughs> we got the point we went. Right? But we got the strip steak <laughs> because it comes with caramel pretzel bread savory pudding, and it was amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna make that. And it was delicious, and the steak was cooked perfectly. So you cannot go wrong with steak there, but. The reason we were here, the charcuterie board. I gotta say, my favorite thing on that entire board had to have been the bison and cherry that has been sort of cured. Made in house. Uh, made in house, incredible. What a great flavor, not gamey at all, very lean, but incredibly flavorful. I preferred the other meat, the, the, I believe it was a salami, mm -hmm. and it had a mustard uh, and maple rub on it. It was perfection. But for me, the real highlight of this board, the unsung hero, the most unique thing about this board is that beef fat candle. So cool. And also like what a neat presentation. Such a neat presentation made in house. It's got rosemary in the beef fat and garlic. So when you spread it on the cracker or the bread, it adds a whole new elevation and a whole new level. I also was a big fan of the popcorn accoutrement. It was the maple popcorn that they sell in the Canada Pavilion. They had it as a brittle and it came with the brie and that was like a sweet and savory thing I didn't know I needed. Oh, it was incredible. I will say there was one thing that was a little bit of a miss for me and that was a stone ground mustard. Most stone ground mustards I can really get on board with. This one was very acidic and there was some uh, overt nuttiness to it that was felt almost uh, I shouldn't say burnt, but it had like that sort of bitter flavor. Uh, that is the only thing that I think with that acidic and bitterness, I know it's meant to cut through the richness of the cheese, but in this case, it was just a bit too much for me personally. Overall, I think this is going to be a tough one to beat, an incredible board. And this yeah. is your like elevated board, I feel like. This isn't your starter charcuterie. Mm. This has got your very unique cheese accompaniment, house-made unique meats in that candle. Very different. All right, how many sneaky snacks? I'm giving it 9.2 Snicky Snacks. 9.2? I'm 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 gonna give us room to grow, but I think that one's gonna be tough to beat. Okay. 
I'm gonna give this 8.7 Snicky Snacks. Reason being, Strong. it's an incredible board. There is a little bit of a barrier to entry in that you have to get a reservation in La Cellier. <laughs> but then you can accidentally order a steak. Yeah, that's something people do accidentally all the time. Oopsies. <laughs> oh, look, a steak just showed up. What am I uh, going to do with this perfectly medium rare cut of meat? Uh, but it's an incredible charcuterie board. I think it has something that everybody's looking for. It is elevated, right? But I think um, it's, 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 it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. We've made it to our next stop on our delicious charcuterie throwdown, this time at one of my favorite resorts in Disney World, Disney's Wilderness Lodge. This is a deluxe resort in the Magic Kingdom area, though not on the monorail line, and it's home to several very popular dining options in Walt Disney World. And while you may be thinking of Geyser Point Bar and Grill, which is down on the waterfront, we're actually headed to a different lounge, maybe not as popular, but they just redid their menu and excited to try their brand new charcuterie. This is my favorite part of coming to the Wilderness Lodge. This lobby is just so beautiful. Oh, multiple stories high. A stay here, I'm definitely manifesting on the 2023 bucket list. Territory Lounge is just off the main lobby of the Wilderness Lodge where they serve a variety of craft cocktails and bar bites. Uh, and it's also one of my favorite spots to just go and sort of relax because the vibe of this lounge is everything. I love it. It feels like a rustic cabin. Uh, and as Molly mentioned, they have recently revised and sort of updated their menu for bar bites. And uh, listen, we might just have to come back here and try those things out. Maybe, maybe do a video about some of the most underrated lounges. How does that sound? From left to right, we have prosciutto, salami, brosciola, which is a, the only beef representation you'll actually see on this charcuterie board. The rest are going to be pork. And then finally, capicola. For our cheeses, we have burrata, a rabanière, a smoked blue, and a, and this is going to be a terrible pronunciation, a Cihai Bihai cheese, I believe is what it was listed as. So I'm super excited. Oh, you also have on the back end sort of hidden here, gherkin pickles, as well as honey with a little bit of the honeycomb, some pickled vegetables, and grapes, because health, obviously. And this is accompanied by buckwheat crackers. Okay, we have another charcuterie in the books. Territory Lounge, a very good charcuterie. Points for the presentation, mm -hmm. I would say. Love the clothesline situation. Also, there was an ample amount of stuff on there. Yeah, I did felt have a like lot. I felt like for the price point, you're getting a lot of food. Like, you could easily split that with more people. We hadn't eaten today, so it, it was, we it ate was it all good, yeah. immediately. Yeah. So, okay, so let's talk about this. What was your favorite thing? My favorite thing... Um, I really liked the smoked blue cheese. Mm. I thought that was a little bit different and unusual. I really liked the fresh honeycomb, and I really liked the burrata, which, surprise, had a little truffle on it. Uh, the so burrata that was, was nice. good. Yeah, I think I liked the gabagool. I'm sorry, the capicola. Uh, really, really tasty, very flavorful. It's probably one of my favorite of the sort of cured meats, um, and that, that, was, that was incredible. So that had to be my highlight, along with the pickled cauliflower. Mm. Did not think it would be, but here's the reason the pickled cauliflower was my favorite, because what this board was missing was a mustard. Yes, it, it didn't have a condiment. spread. It didn't have a spread. You had honey, and mustard is there to give you some acidity, and that's what I think the cauliflower was intending to do. I also didn't love the cracker situation. They were fine. I don't have anything negative to say about it, but I much prefer like a crostini, Mm -hmm. um, or something a, a little variety. garlicky. Right. I just it was just kind of a bland cracker that wasn't my favorite. May I make an observation? You may. Why is it that it seems like they are charging guests by the cracker? Yeah, there's never enough crackers. Right. I mean, we go there and like here's six of them. It's like the it's like the guy uh, just sitting there counting out bills at the bank, and it's like here take take your eight crackers and be happy about them. But that, that's true about charcuterie boards everywhere. Um, that said, if you ask nicely, they'll obviously bring yeah. you more crackers or whatever the, uh, yeah. the you know, vehicle for so you get the, the cheese in your mouth. Uh, cheese and meats, but okay. On the sneaky snack scale, what you thinking? I'm gonna give this one like a, a seven nine. Seven nine. Very good to me. I thought there was again ample amounts of meats and cheese. Uh, I really liked the fresh honeycomb. I loved the truffle burrata. I just wish that there was another condiment, yeah. and um, it wasn't my favorite bread cracker sitch. I echo all of those sentiments. For me, a seven point six. Mm. It is an 
it is just a solid board. I don't think you're going to be disappointed by it. Uh, it's not going to blow you out of the water by any stretch, but that is a solid, solid charcuterie board. Also, bonus points for it being here at the Wilderness Lodge, which is one of my favorite resorts. So. Yeah. It is pretty. It's so pretty. Well, we've eaten seven of the best charcuterie boards in Walt Disney World. Before we get to the final result, I would like to give an honorable mention to both Haleo and Grand Estino Tower. Those are both Spanish-influenced menus, and they do a good charcuterie as well, but whew, had to make some tough choices. And with that, friends... Here you have it. This is your charcuterie board final throwdown ranking. Congratulations to Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar for coming out on top, cinching that gold medal. If it teaches us anything, more carbs is the way to go. Isn't that just the way? Yeah. It's like everywhere else gave me a cracker and they gave me a big pretzel, so. And homecoming gave us biscuits. We had to ask for those extra. Just saying it's not on the board to begin with got you know integrity of the of the experiment in all honesty though we didn't have a bad board anywhere i think we tried a great range of boards throughout this video all different price points all different kinds of meats and cheeses from your usual and familiar all the way to your beef candle yeah gotta love a beef candle though and that just makes you think what could we do next so drop your ideas in the comments down below for what we could do next on our only eating series in the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media. And until next time, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical and so delicious. I'm so full. This was such a good idea. I'm so happy. Yeah. Go watch our Only Eating Cheese video now. <laughs>